may be seated. Thank you. to their general budget, we'd say, and the other 25% to our regional pastor, Reverend Ray DeLaurier. Uh, Vacation Bible School, coming up the end of this month, right after Memorial Day. So this Tuesday, there's a work day here in the morning. Um, anybody can come. One of the main things will be cooking up the tavern for that week at BBS, but there will also be other projects that won't go any longer than noon. Okay, let me see. Also, I want to mention this now at the end, end of our service today. We have uh, Daniel Schaefer and Donna Zay with us. They're going to share with us a little bit about this Crossroads Prison Ministries. So, uh, and then they'll be available in the social hall to answer other questions about it. But with that, and we're honoring graduates and the kids singing, so... I'm just telling you, if you think we're going to be done right at 10.30 today, we're not. Okay? So, I doubt it. I'll say it that way. Uh, but if you have plans, absolutely, we understand that. But we are here to worship the Lord above all. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is a glorious day, a beautiful morning. And we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, for you are the faithful one our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Even your word says, if we are faithless, you remain faithful, for you cannot deny yourself. And we are filled with faith this day and joy and excitement as we've just sung that chorus, Jesus, Messiah, yours is the name above every name. You are our Redeemer. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You rescued us as sinners. You are the ransom from heaven, and we praise you as Lord of all, and that's why we're here. So, Father, as always, we ask that you would fill this sanctuary with your presence and your power and your glory and move, us among, move among us today. Please, Lord God, by the power of your Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn is number 128. 128 in your hymnal, and the words will be on the screen. Let's stand as we sing this. I sing the mighty power of God. <laughs>
bring one another, please, before you're seated. Do we have any birthday announcements? Marie. My mom's birthday is on May 9th. Yes, Julie Crick. Nice. Trace. Both birthdays on May 9th. Oh, Ruth Miller's birthday is on May 9th. Oh, there his hand was up. All right. Oh, happy birthday to you. And we have Calvin Hagee's birthday is on May 9th. He's 90? Yes. Yeah. Bow our heads, please. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of our service where we, we rejoice with all these birthdays, so many of them today and coming Tuesday and also in the, in the past, as was mentioned. I just give you thanks for your goodness. 95 years, all the way down to probably seven, I think Bo is going to be, and everywhere in between. We thank you for such a special day for Calvin with most all of his family here this morning and together for the afternoon. Thank you for blessing their lives and watching over them. And Lord, uh, for the joy of another new baby within the church of Trevor and Nicole, you bless them with a healthy little boy, August. And thank you for the continued blessings in their lives each and every day. Lord, for uh, Logan being home from the Navy. I was so excited Friday, I think it was, or Thursday, when he popped, stopped by. And, and we're just, it's a joy to have him here. We thank you for your service to our nation and all those that serve in full time in the Navy. We have Travis and the Army, Corbin and others, and many that serve in the Guard so faithfully. We pray for all of our troops asking your hand of protection upon them. We pray for our leaders to guide and direct in all the decisions around the world. <laughs> Help them to be led by your spirit, Lord God. We pray, Father, for Gary and Sally Silers. They're adjusting to new life there. And we thank you that this was found and that the surgery was done and it was successful. We ask for healing to them, for Jerome and Kathy Nuss, Pray for healing throughout their bodies, for Dustin Christensen and Marcia Shelsky, uh, both with pancreatic cancer, many others in our bulletin. Father, you know them each by name, and we lift them up to you. Thank you, Father, for the rain, Lord. We had our hopes set quite high with the forecasters, but it wasn't quite meant to be here yet. But we lift this to you. Father, we always think of your word in Chronicles when you spoke to Solomon. And you said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, that you would hear from heaven and you would heal our land. And so, Lord... Definitely, we humble ourselves as a congregation here this morning as we ask for your forgiveness for our sin, for the sin of our nation, which is great. We ask for healing to the nation, first of all, with the outpouring of your spirit. Secondly, Lord, we need your life-giving rain. That's how you designed this earth to work, and you know it better than we do. This is the time of year, desperately, when we need it. So we ask, Father, for you to arrange the weather patterns, that they wouldn't scoot around us to the north or the south, that you would bring us ample moisture through this season. And we thank you for it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask the seniors who are here today, if they'd come up quick. It's going to take a couple minutes to end, uh, to recognize our high school seniors. And let's see, Amy, you're here, and Shaley wants you to come up as well, okay? Please, two of our college graduates. Paige Dyke is not here, is she? She graduated in the summer, so you can just line up over here, okay? So first, let me mention our two of the college ones. If you want to put, we have Aiden, Reason. He graduated from SDSU yesterday, a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science with Chemistry minor. Aiden's going to continue his education by attending veterinary school at SDSU slash U of M. So congratulations, Aiden. Shaylee DeVere, who soon in a month or so will be Shaylee Schultz. Yes, graduated from Dakota State yesterday. Double major elementary education and special ed with a minor in pre-K through 12th grade reading. And she will be our new fifth grade teacher at Mount School this fall. 
So, and then we have our high schoolers. So, okay, two, four, six, eight, well, we've got eight of our ten. We're just blessed with a large senior class in the school and the church. So, I'm going to have them each tell you the name and where you, what are your plans afterwards. Hi, I'm Marie Fire, and I'm going to Watertown first. Watertown, okay. My name is Braden Sauer, and I'm going to West Iowa Tech for Firefighter EMT. Okay. My name is Alex Fisher, and I'm going to plan to attend Mitchell Tech for Powerline Construction and Maintenance. Good. I'm Lane Schmidt, I'm attending Mitchell Technical College for something in the medical field. <laughs> My name is Hallie Van Hoven, I'm going to Lake Area for Cosmetology. My name is Blake Ramos. I'm attending Lake Area for DC Player. My name is Maverick Smith, and I'm going to SDSU for Psychology. My name is AJ Harold, and I'm going to go to SDSU for uh, Egg Science. All right, I'll get that in just a second. So these are little pocket New Testaments that uh, a couple in our church gets every year for the graduating seniors to take to college with you for just a little pocket Bible. Hallie, let's see, what is yours? There it is. Where'd the microphone go? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's all right. So these are our seniors. Most of them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these high school seniors, for Aiden and Shaley, college graduates. Bless them, guide them, the college grads as they go on in their lives, and these seniors as they step into college, Votech, and all that you have for them. Lord, what a joy it's been to watch them grow from little on up in, in this congregation to see the gifts and talents you put within them. It's so exciting, and we celebrate with them and their families. Lord, let them follow your will each and every day and shine for you through their college years and even beyond. We pray your hand of protection upon them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. You can go back to your seats. As I said, today's offering is for the work of the four C's. If you're visiting, we just have the offering box in the back there. Um, that's how we've been doing it now. I want to read Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2. It says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Let's stand and we'll sing the doxology. <laughs> Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Today our chair of choir is going to sing for us. The Cuber plays the piano and then she directs them. So, come on now. <laughs>
come down. A big thanks to Deb Schmidt and Mick Huber. There, we're going to be looking for a new director and accompanist this fall for this chair of choir. Deb, I was looking back, I think at least six years she's directed and Mick has played for the last couple of years for sure. You did a wonderful job with the kids. Mm, I sure do. That was wonderful. You sang so loud and from your heart. I can't wait to watch it when it's on our when it's on YouTube later. Well, do you remember what Pastor Mike is teaching us? We're talking about a song, a certain song. You know, it's the most famous in all the Bible. Any clues? Psalm, does this give you a reminder? We can. 23, everybody see that? Psalm 23. We're talking about Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Remember now? Is it coming back to you? Good. Okay, well, I taught you some um, motions, hand motions last time, so we're just going to review that really quick, okay? Eyes up here on me. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me behind, beside the quiet streams of water. We're, we're going to stop right there, okay? Who's our shepherd? Yes, you know what? David, in the Old Testament, God was their shepherd. But then when Jesus came and died for us and rose for us, he became the good shepherd. It says in John 10, 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So this psalm is talking about how much we love God, how much we love Jesus, and how much he loves us. Because in the Bible, we're, we're called what? What did David call us in the Bible in that Psalm 23? We are sheep. We're sheep, right? And God and Jesus are our shepherd. So sheep need a shepherd to take them to take them and provide for them, and to take, take them and lay them down and give them grass to eat and water to drink. Everything we need. We don't have to worry. We don't have to try to get it for ourselves, right? But God will make sure that we get it. So this psalm reminds us of that, okay? So let's remember all about this Psalm 23. We'll review more later next week and add a little bit more. Okay, let's pray. Ready? Close your eyes. Fold your hands. Father God, we thank you so much that you are a good shepherd. And Jesus, you are a good shepherd today. And we thank you for everything you've given to us. That we don't have to worry. That we are safe. That we are taken care of. That you give us rest and peace. You give us everything, Lord. Help these boys and girls and us as adults to remember that every single day, no matter what we face, we are not alone. I ask you to bless these boys and girls. Give them a great week wherever they go. Help them to shine your light, Jesus, to all they see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I think if you're... You're going to go to bed first. Go to bed. And then you're going to go find your Sunday school teacher. And find your Sunday school teacher. Okay? Go to bed. Right there. And then find your Sunday school teacher. What they're getting today, in addition to their paper, they're getting a CD of the music for Vacation Bible School, one per family, and they're also getting the certificate for their ice cream cone that we do at the end of the school year. So this year the certificate is to Total Stop. Parents will notice a difference on that. So it's Total Stop in Menno or Freeman. That can be used. So, we're giving them out now, so hopefully between here and the time they get to you, they don't lose it, right? We're going to sing uh, number one as the kids are going back to right. sing right. this out of the praise book. I have a song.
Psalm 23 is what we're on, as Anne said with the children. Say it with me, please. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy God and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What a beautiful song. Uh, this is our third Sunday on it. There's many more as we go through, just piece by piece. As I said, the first Sunday, uh, it's so beautiful. If I, as I have observed over, over the years of my ministry, Certainly here, many times, um, someone in the later years, maybe in a state of dementia, that type of a thing. Maybe it's, I've seen it in stroke victims, where they weren't able to speak words at all, basically. And I'd be with them and I'd say, you know what, let's say the 23rd Psalm. And much to my amazement, to the doctor's amazement at times who's been in the room, Say it perfectly clear. Yet to answer a question, words don't come. Maybe someone who doesn't even know their family anymore or their spouse or, you know, I've seen those, but yet they can say it just as clear as ever. Because God's word in our heart. So we're looking at this. Jesus, as we know, he said in John's gospel twice, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We are his sheep, the people of his pasture. 
There was a time in Matthew chapter 9 when Jesus was going throughout Israel. The Bible says, teaching, preaching, and healing the sick. We see that many times in the Gospels, that phrase. But Jesus, that's what he did. And one of those times when he, there was a large crowd there, Matthew 9.36, it says this, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so he had compassion on them then, and so he has compassion on us today. He knows our situation. He sees the world situation when, um, that troubles our hearts in so many days and troubles his heart. But he is always at work. He is our gentle shepherd, leading, guiding, reaching out, trying to draw us back to himself as he does so wonderfully. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that's the first verse. The second verse goes on, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's, we only got through half of that last Sunday. So the second verse, we start into then all that he does for us as our shepherd, our good shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So the first two points on here, I'm just going to skim through because if I go through them all, we probably won't get any further than we did last week, right? So green pastures. Green grass. We all want green grass. We want green grass in our yards. We want green grass in our pastures. I've talked to several of you. The concern is great already this year in our area for the grass that we didn't get moisture last year. And this year already is on the lacking side, even after all the snow that we had. Maybe West River up. Timber Lake, where we used to live in that way, I'm sure the pastures are lush, I would imagine, up that way. But he, all this compares to us as sheep and how we live our lives on this earth following Jesus. He makes us to lie down in green pastures, full of nourishment, full of nutrients in our lives. And I quote from this book I've been reading, it's a... Um, a Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm by this guy, W. Philip Keller. I'm going to quote this part again. For sheep, it is almost impossible for them to lie down unless four requirements are met. The amazing part of this picture is that only the shepherd himself can provide release from these anxieties. And so it compares to Jesus in our lives. First was they have to be free from all fear. Okay, got to find last week's message on YouTube. It's on there um, to get that. Secondly, free, they have to be free from friction within the flock. There's, there's as any flock group or herding um, society of animals, there's always the head butting, the chicken pecking we talked about last week for dominance. Well, unfortunately, as people, as his sheep, yeah, we can act that way too. And it's not always good, is it? No, we got to keep our eyes on Jesus, always. And another quote from this guy, Philip Keller, he said, as he was a shepherd all his years, one point that always interested me was that whenever I, the shepherd, came into view of the sheep and my presence attracted their attention, the sheep quickly forgot their foolish rivalries and stopped their fighting. The shepherd's presence made all the difference in their behavior. Isn't that amazing? And so it is with us. And so we always, you know every Sunday and all every day in between, we are always praying for God's presence to be manifest in our midst, in all that we do, so that we're focused on him above all and worshiping and serving him. Second point under that, we talked about a verse from Hebrews that says he's the great shepherd. And that's as far as we got. So I'm going on to point number three this morning. We'll start here. The sheep, they have to be free from flies, pests, and parasites. Free from that. Flies, pests, and parasites. Well, yeah, pests, those things, they're going to be a part of their lives. They can't be totally ridden forever. 
until we come into the new heavens and the new earth and Jesus talks about the lion, the lion laying down with the lamb, right? There were no pests, parasites, fleas, or anything in the Garden of Eden before sin, but this is all a result of the fall, that we have to deal with these things and always will as long as we are here. So the sheep, it used to be in days gone by, years gone by, the shepherds would take them through like a trough thing that had chemical in it. Maybe a lot of you have done that, I'm sure. To try and, and get the bugs and the ticks and all those things off of them and out of the wool. Today, I've, it can be poured on their back. Um, there can be shots that can be given for this purpose. But I was reminded of this verse in Psalm 34, as far as us being people, God's sheep. He said in Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. They're going to happen. That is part of life. But the Lord delivers us from them all. That's the good news of it. So the trials, the struggles of life, they are there. But Jesus is our good shepherd. He's there to walk, walk with us through them. It, it's, you know, we can, as far as people and our bug spray, and you have one for mosquitoes, you got a different one for gnats, and a different one for this and that, and we put it on. The, they're all still there. It's just trying to protect us so we're not getting bit up, right? They're there, and these are just like the attacks of Satan himself as he comes against us, tries to knock us down, tries to discourage us in our lives. The battlefield, as I say, is in the mind, and that's where he attacks. So for the sheep, and this we'll get into more later when it comes into the phrase in the 23rd Psalm that he anoints our head with oil. There's a meaning in there of, of oil, a mixture that kept these pests and parasites and these certain flies that would crawl up into the nasal passages of the sheep and lay their eggs in there, if you can imagine. And if that wasn't dealt with, it would drive the sheep crazy, literally, and they would die. And so we see the resemblance in this, us as people, that's why we need the helmet of salvation, the word of God, to think upon, to meditate on, to protect our minds from the attack of the enemy, the thoughts that come. Thoughts will come and go, but it's what we do with them that counts. If we take that thought and just dwell on it, dwell on it, dwell on it, and then it starts taking hold, it's not a good thing to do. It's no fun if you're trying to work. I think back to our years at Cameron again, that little church and no air conditioning in, so the windows were open and the doors were open just to move air through. And I, I, led, I played the keyboard there. And most often the worst was then, because so the flies would come in, because it was just from here to the parsonage away, the family that lived there had horses. And you know what comes with that, right? Flies. And they would, and I'd be trying to play, and they'd be buzzing around my head, and I'd be swatting and swatting and trying to play. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You just keep going. But that's how the devil's attacks are. Okay, fourth point here. The sheep, they have to be well-fed and watered. This is all very basic, I realize. Well-fed and watered. A hungry, ill-fed sheep is ever on its feet, this, the author said, on the move, searching for another scanty, skimpy mouthful of forage to try and satisfy its gnawing hunger. Such sheep are not content and do not thrive. Now here, I'd have to say here, even probably, in, and I don't mean this badly, but in the worst of our conditions of drought, it would still be better than large portions of Israel, which is much desert-type terrain, especially southern Israel. The Navajo Reservation where we lived, high desert, those sheep, what they survive on was always beyond us to know. But the shepherd leads and guides. As you do, you most have corrals fenced in pastures and all of that, and you provide feed for them. The one grandpa from our church there lived to be 105. 
He died a year after we left and moved to Timber Lake. Every morning you could count on him like clockwork, even at 100 years and beyond. He'd be coming because he lived up just on a mesa just above us. He'd bring those sheep down, I don't know, 50 of them I'd say at least. And as I told you, whatever, last week or the week before, they always heard it from behind. That's how he did. And he'd talk to them as they were going. And they'd come down and they'd come by our house and he'd keep them on the path. And then in back there was a canyon not far, not the Grand Canyon, which was 40 miles, but another smaller canyon. And in there, there was a stream that ran. And he would take him down to that stream, and some parts on the sides, there would be a type of grass, if you want to call it that. Take him out there for the food and water. Afternoon, he'd be out there with them all day. Afternoon, here he'd come back. He, heard, he knew them all, I'm sure, by name. He took very well care of them. One time, uh, after he had gone back home with the sheep, and later that day, I look out and here there's two sheep chewing up Anne's flowers. <laughs> well, you had to work to grow flowers out there, right? let me tell you. And I thought, sure enough, those are his sheep. So I went up there to his house. Some of you know this, I'm not going to know the whole story of it all, but he only spoke English, mostly only spoke English, so I'm getting in my head, how am I gonna tell him in Navajo that his sheep are eating our flowers? And so I'm going through all that up there, and I tell him, and he's very, very hard of hearing, so I'm yelling in his ear, and instead of his answer coming to me in Navajo, he says in English, much to my surprise, those aren't my sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and then in Navajo, he's going, those are, that lady over there, it's probably her sheep. I knew what he said. He knew he had all his sheep in that corral because he knew how many he had and, uh, and knew them by name, and I'm sure he counted them when he got them all in there. So there's no question in his mind. He didn't have to go out and look. He said, those are not my sheep. So Jesus is our good shepherd, that he knows us by name, and he feeds us and waters us incredibly. With his word, number one, with his word, here at church, as you study his word at home throughout the week, as you're listening to Christian programs on the radio or podcasts or whatever, we are so without excuse today to not be well fed and watered in the word of God. I'm telling you, we are. When we stand before Jesus, and he might quiz us on that, I'm guessing he might say, and you lived in the 21st century? And you are lacking in God's word? How can that be? With all the technology I gave you when you lived on that earth, and you never took advantage of it. Just a thought. Let's get on to the second point here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. It's not an easy thing to happen. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Second point of this. The still waters. So, human body, what I at least Google, 60% of our body is made up of water. Sheep, 70%, it said, of their bodies, made up of water. We know that dehydration can cause serious damage, can't it? Not a good thing. Thankfully, in this day, if you know what's going on, we can go to the hospital, get rehydrated, and get going again. But in the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah calls Jesus the fountain of living water. He is our living water. Jeremiah 2.13, listen to this verse. Now this is when Israel had forsaken the Lord God. And if you read the whole passage, that chapter, you'll see it. He's telling them, look, I, I led you through that wilderness. I brought you into the promised land, to this land flowing with milk and honey. And you had homes that you didn't even have to build. You settled in there. And what happened in the prosperity? You forsook me. You forsook me, he says. And this verse 13 of chapter 2, Jeremiah, my people have committed two sins. Here it is. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, 
broken cisterns that cannot hold water. What's he saying? He's saying that to us today too. In the prosperity of our nation, God has blessed us beyond most all nations of the world. And many have turned and forsaken the Lord our God. Get comfortable. Uh, what do I need the Lord for? I have everything I could ever want. Failing to realize it's only because of him that we have all these blessings, right? He's the fountain of living water, building their own cisterns. What's that? Self. I can do this all myself. I don't need God. I can do it. Dangerous place to be. The still waters. That word in Greek means quiet, peaceful waters. Not stagnant, not dirty, just clear and pure. So, again, all this about sheep are coming from what I'm reading. In different times I've talked to some of you and you that used to have sheep in the church over the years past. The three main sources of water for sheep, number one, and this is the one they prefer the most, would be the dew on the grass in the morning. Secondly, deep wells. Yeah, they have to be drawn up, right? Thirdly, streams or springs. So, I had asked, this was actually some years back, I was talking to Seth Friesen one day about this, and he told me, whatever day I talked to him, he said, you, you remember that rain we had on Monday? I said, yeah. He said, you know what, on Tuesday morning there was such a heavy dew on the grass that when the sheep did not come back in for water in the troughs all day, they were satisfied with that dew, the heavy dew on the grass. The still waters there. How, you, how do you get that? Generally in the early morning hours, especially through the summer months, right? That's, you guys that bale hay, the big round bales, I hear it often. You say, I'm going to get up at 2 in the morning or whatever, and if the dew is just right at that point, we're going out and we're baling until it dries off. The early morning hours. Well, so what is that? What does it say to us? Psalm 63, verse 1. Listen to this. Oh God, you are my God. Early. Everybody say early. Early. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Now, I know some of you are night owls, and that's all right. If that's your study time in the Word, that's okay. For those that are morning people, I am. Those early morning hours, there's nothing better the way I see it. No. The opposite, you'd be like, uh, no, sir, Pastor Mike. So, this grandpa here, as I talked about, that Navajo grandpa, he'd be out there early in the morning. Because even in the dryness of that climate, it was the cool of the day, and chances are there could be a slight dew on whatever grass could be found. Those early morning hours, though, again, when you just start your day, yeah, it might mean getting in the pattern of, okay, I'm going to set my alarm 15 minutes earlier, just to have that time with the Lord. And maybe you do that already, but there should be that time. John 7, 37, Jesus, on the great day of the feast, he stood up and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Why? Because he's the fountain of living water. John 4, the woman at the well, very a good example again. If anyone comes to me and drink, he will never thirst again, because I, he is the fountain of living water. So we have to be partaking of that, of his word, always just drinking it in, drinking it in, of his worship, worshiping him in those quiet times, pulling away his presence. You know this, I've told you countless times over the years, there is nothing better than in the stillness of his presence. And for me, the reaction is usually tears. I've seen some people that maybe get the giggles or something else. But for me, it's tears. Just thinking about that the God of the universe, 
cares enough for each one of us, even individually, to manifest his presence in our lives. I'm talking in a tangible way. That's pretty amazing. It truly is. So the still waters. We'll go on to verse 3, I believe it is. God willing, next Sunday he restores my soul. Let's pray. Father, your word is so incredible. We're just inching through it, trying to get the most out of it. And even at that, there's still so much more in this passage. Thank you for being our good shepherd, <clears throat> for guiding us, leading us, <clears throat> being patient with our lives, forgiving us of our sin. Lord, help us to, if we don't have that time with you, help us to find that time. And Lord, if there's anyone in here who maybe is hearing and saying, I don't know if I've ever sensed his presence. We know that you're always with us. We know that. But we also know there are greater manifestations of your presence. Lord, if anyone's here thinking that, I just pray that before we leave today, that you would overwhelm them with your presence in a way they've never known before. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Our closing song is from the praise book, The God of Angel Armies, Whom Shall I Fear? Well, he's not only our good shepherd, he's also the God of Angel Armies. He tells that to Joshua. <coughs> Joshua chapter 1, is commander of the army of the Lord of hosts, I have now come. And he's here. Let's stand as we sing this one. 133. <coughs>
song, I tell you what. We're gonna have, you can stay, we're just gonna have a couple minutes more here, five-ish, okay? And um, I'm gonna show their two quick video clips and then I'll have uh, Danielle, Schaefer, Donna, whichever, gonna just share briefly and then they'll be available in the social hall. But this is a very simple thing to do, but powerful thing to do, a ministry without ever having to go inside the walls, uh, but you can have a powerful impact, okay? This is what it's about. Crossroads Prison Ministries is an international ministry that offers a correspondence-based Bible study program. We connect incarcerated men and women with mentors from the outside so they can study God's word together and exchange life-giving letters. When a person behind bars decides to sign up for the Crossroads program, they can receive an enrollment form from a current Crossroads student, their chaplain, or the Crossroads office. They fill out the enrollment form and send it to Crossroads. Once they are enrolled, Crossroads mails them their first lesson. The student receives the lesson and completes it. They can also write questions and prayer requests in the lesson. Once they have completed the lesson, they mail it back to the Crossroads office. After receiving the student's completed lesson, Crossroads sends them their next lesson. Crossroads mails the completed lesson to a volunteer mentor. The mentor reviews the lesson and provides feedback. After reviewing the lesson, the mentor writes a letter to the student. In the letter, the mentor offers encouragement, reflects on the student's work, and guides the student toward the love of God as the Holy Spirit leads. Finally, the mentor mails the reviewed lesson, along with the encouraging letter, directly to the student in an envelope provided by Crossroads. If you are interested in becoming a mentor, please visit the Crossroads website at cpministries.org. I was running every day to that little window at 5 p.m. where the, the guards were delivering the daily mail just to see if I had a letter. that becomes the lifeline for them behind bars. Um, if you think about the fact that less than 12% of prison population get regular visitors, um, it's very understandable how life-giving a letter can be. In the four years that I was in custody, nobody from that congregation came to see me. Not one. How many letters did I receive from that congregation, pastor, elder, you name it, or members? In four years, how many letters did I receive from any of these people? None. But for me, the letter from my mentor was giving me fresh air for the whole week. And jail is such a lonely time. Every single letter you get means that someone sat down for a, a given period of time, and thought about you, thought about what to write you. They, they took time and effort and, uh, and put pen to paper. Man, to get a letter from someone outside, it's like gold. If the simple task of me writing something as simple as a letter means so much to you, you don't even know who I am. What is the magnitude of what's going on here? Like, this is way bigger than me basic program of bringing uh, the, the church and, and church members as mentors in connection with prisoners in the prisons and the locations around the world. The Bible says, remember people in prison like you were there with them. I can't think of a, a more clear call that the Bible actually gives us is to remember people in prison and to visit them in any way that we can. And that's what we do here at Crossroads. Danielle, most, this is Wesley's wife, most of you know her and Donna, so they just got a couple quick comments, I guess. Thanks for letting us come and share about Crossroads um, Ministry. Um, I'm just a, 
um, baby mentor because I've only been doing this for almost 15 years. Don has been doing this for uh, much longer. When you think about um, getting a lesson once a week and how many people's lives that you can touch, I know that um, some of you have gone to do prison ministry and you know during that time you maybe go once a month or even if you went once a week you would have contact with a couple of people maybe personally. Over the last you know 10 to 15 years we're talking over a thousand you know letters, a thousand different people. Um, get a, a lesson from a different person. If you're a level one or a tier one mentor, you get a different person every week. Um, somebody from, I think I've only had somebody from South Dakota maybe once or twice. So they don't ever know who you are. Um, you don't ever sign your name to the letter. Um, it's completely anonymous, but you have personal contact to potentially thousands of people. I was telling Pastor Mike, I said, I think the most impactful letter that I ever received from a student was somebody who had prayer requests written from at least four other men. So you know that that person not only read that letter, but was sharing that letter and that lesson with at least four other people and so you're impacting not only the person you're sending the letter to, but other people as well. Um, COVID has shut down a lot of, you know, some of the volunteer services are just starting to get back into the prison. And these letters continued even during that time. You know, there was maybe a very short break where the mail wasn't being delivered. Um, there's lots of, there's rules to follow. There's lots of help that you can get. Um, it's been a very, I think I probably got more out of it. Well, anyway, like she said, I'll be honest with you, I've done it over 20 years. And it's been such a blessing. You can't even imagine some of the little remarks and stuff that you get from uh, a prisoner that has received this letter. Uh, we also benefit from them from learning. It's a joy to read the prisoner's comments about how it's meant to, to have learned about God that loves them and forgives them for what they have done and what Jesus has done for them on the cross. Many has never even heard about God until they got to prison. And they found the, the crossroad program. They also are thankful, like Daniel said, for the letters. We, as mentors, write after we've checked their lessons. Many, like we've mentioned before, many never, ever get a letter. Nothing. Their family has totally thrown them out. They don't want nothing to do with them. And like you've seen on the screen, that, that letter means just everything to them that somebody took their time. You know, and it's not that hard to do. There's a lesson sent to you, like Daniel said, and we have a help book that gives you help how to answer some of these questions. So anyway, Crossroads has many prisoner letters that need to be answered. They are waiting for somebody who is willing to give a little time, maybe an hour, a week, for them, and they are so welcome, those letters, and all we can say, we'd appreciate any one of you consider to do this. It's just a wonderful ministry, and like I have learned a lot from them. You talk about dedication of somebody who knows the Bible. It's unreal. We can learn from them. So thank you for having us come. questions, probably help you get signed up, I'm assuming, if you want, and I think it's a great ministry. All right, please receive the benediction.
Now may the Lord go with you. May he go ahead of you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, see you out there. Thanks, Marina, for the beautiful music, and have a wonderful day in the Lord.